such harsh language. So the title to the video is Triple X. It says whoredom in the book. Title to the video is Triple uh, X Sex Scene. Uh, Paul is uh, leafing through the King James. Where, so we're building a, a 1224 Intex or fixing one. And, uh, oh, put the boards again. Okay, so it's Ezekiel 23 okay. is the uh, the verse in question, and oops. Ooh, watch for the car. They weren't stopping. Hello. Okay, doing a little navigating. Here Tara. we go. Thank Ezekiel you for watching, Mike. Val. Ezekiel 23. So this is uh, some watching. very graphic stuff some very graphic stuff in Ezekiel and it it'll make you blush it'll make you blush for certain and um, but it is a metaphor <laughs> not literal and but you can make it as literal as you'd like to it's very uh, very as like what do you think of this scene first, like what's where you are in the, what's your this, first reaction this to this story. scene what do you think of Ezekiel 23 and, and what Yaz what's Yaz describing reaction? his bride Israel well, I, that's what I, I, you know, I wanted to do a little research because is he talking about, well, he's talking about specific cities. Samaria and Jerusalem. So, Samaria is Aeola, and Jerusalem is Aoliba. Probably obliterating those names. Either way, Ezekiel chapter twenty. Three, verse four is kind of where you want to start. So get, so it's going to say Aola and Aoliba as the two sisters, but it's actually talking about Samaria, who is Aola, and Jerusalem, two cities. It's talking about two cities, sort of like Sodom and Gomorrah kind of thing. Should I start reading now? Uh, yeah. Like so, a little background in there too. It's it's talking about. Israel, and Yah is a jealous yeah, God, not and just He's Israel, Jerusalem specifically. Well, that's part of Israel, and Samaria, um, which is not part of Israel. So Yah is heartbroken because Yah married his bride Israel because they divorced Pharaoh. So they, they were very unique, very important people. They are the apple of Yah's eye, and then his bride, his lover. Imagine your wife, right? She started uh, taking orders and uh, listening to other authorities, and she rebelled. So basically, there was a divorce and um, trial separation. And, uh, <laughs> it was a breakup, and it was very hard on Yah because Yah, his bride, was sleeping around. She was sleeping around with Uncle Sam and Rothschild and Caesar and Pharaoh, and. Whenever the bride uh, pours around Egypt, uh, sorry, Israel, she is automatically put into captivity in Egypt. So when Yah references Egypt in these verses, it's talking about how she was whoring in her younger years. She was idolatrous with Egypt. Not talking about an actual woman. <laughs> so these verses are very graphic. This is very naughty stuff. Again, it's metaphor, not very... an actual woman. Oh, dude, check it out. Anthony Michel's on, right? Anthony Michel's is a, the uh, the monetary reform guy in Holland. So for him, Holland. it's like, uh, Anthony, what time Talk is it the, right yeah. now? The Netherlands. Good evening, sir? So he has a usury-free currency uh, that's phone-based. So you can go around. Phone-based? Yeah, it's an app. It's just a smart app, right? Oh. So anybody wow. can join. Cool. This is important, dude. This is like the oh, most important. It? I thought we were okay. All right. So, see, the only guys, the only way people want to listen to us, like this, is the most viewers we've had ever because we're talking about naughty stuff. We have five people no, on it. Well, we haven't talked about it yet because you're getting distracted. <laughs> I have yet Anthony's to read, awesome. Okay. I have yet to read Ezekiel. Okay, let's hear it. My, I'm bad. The point. It's like they don't even know what we're talking about. We're talking. We're talking about the dirty stuff. Again, it's stuff. a metaphor, not a real woman talking about 
<laughs> two cities, two cultures. Everyone, get your Bibles out because you can't it's even believe about how all nasty. All of us. You can't even believe how dirty this is. That God is thinking of anybody that's ever had their girl cheat on them. This or is how God versa. feels about is us. This is this is about us. This is how whoring we are. This is what we have done with God. Mm-hmm. Okay, so okay, get to the nasty. So again, part. all right, I'm trying. Well, I'm trying to make sure we understand that it's That's not why they're literal. Here. <laughs> because it's talking about two sisters, Aola and Aoliba. Oliba. Oliba and Ola. Ola and Oliba. There. Two sisters. Which are actually two cities. Jerusalem. Ezekiel, Jerusalem, and Samaria. Uh, so Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 5. And Aola played the harlot when she was mine. And she doted on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbors, which were clothed with blue captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen, riding upon horses. Thus she committed her whoredoms with them, with all them that were the chosen men of Assyria, and with all on whom she doted, with all their idols she defiled herself. Neither left she her whoredoms brought from Egypt, for in her youth, they lay with her, and they bruised the breasts of her virginity, and poured their whoredom upon her. Wherefore, I have delivered her into the hand of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians, upon whom she doted. These discovered her nakedness, they took their sons and her, and her daughters, and slew her with the sword, and she became famous among women, for they had executed judgment upon her. And when her sister... Aebola saw this, she was more corrupt in her inordinate love than she. Remember, Aebola is Jerusalem. So this is now talking about Israel. She doted upon the Assyrians, her neighbors, captains and rulers, clothed, gorgeously horsemen, riding upon horses. <laughs> and they, then I saw that she was defiled, that they took both one way. Okay. Now we're going to get to the juicy stuff. I'm going to skip the, ahead. The juicy stuff's coming now. Uh, Ezekiel 23. Yeah, it's a 23. So, Jim and I always talk about this verse. And in the meantime, like uh, yesterday we did a video called The uh, the Grand Facade of, of uh, Idle Wild Church. So, in in the New Testament, it talks about... Oh, there it is. It's on 20. Okay. Okay, back to Ezekiel 20. Okay, so, so she discovered her whoredoms and discovered her nakedness. Then my mind was alienated from her, like as my mind was alienated from her sister. Yet she multiplied her whoredoms in calling to remembrance the days of her youth, wherein she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt. For she doted upon their paramours whose flesh is as the flesh of asses, <laughs> and whose issue is like the issue of horses. All right, this is the King James, by the way. That's King James. This is the King James. It Go. gets, it's very descriptive. Like, they are talking about genitalia and and the seed of the... The, the issue, yeah. The, hor the issuance of the horses. That's strange thing. Oh. <laughs> it threw me off because it had it on Ezekiel... Uh, chapter 23 verse 20 but it's it is what we've seen it's 23 Ezekiel chapter 23 verse 23 but either way in the 20s so go on it, it gets it goes on like it, it's uh, just getting warmed up in the, uh, uh, thus thou calledst to remembrance the lewdness of thy youth in bruising thy teats by the Egyptians <laughs> for the paps of thy youth. Bruising thy teats. Bruising thy teats. <laughs> which In your are, youth. Which I guess can be translated as nipples. Yeah, yeah. We, when we, we did a uh, interlinear um, Strong's Concordance study, and um, in some translation that means nipples. Um, so anyway, like we're, we're like, why would God put something so lewd, something so graphic, 
and just vulgar. Like, it's hard to imagine anything more vulgar than what is, like, the, um, the members of Donkeys. No, no, it is funny. Okay. Yeah. So they're, they're basically talking about Donkey Dongs and, uh... The, the, their issuance, like the, the issuance, the semen of horses. The semen of, uh, but their emissions. <laughs> it's a donkey, a donkey dong with the emission of a horse. So, I guess the horses have much larger emissions than donkeys. Yeah, because they wanted to be very clear. Like, <laughs> this wasn't just the regular old donkey emission that was this coming is, out. Yeah, donkeys, like, in no way can compare to horses. <laughs> When it comes to the emission category, it's everybody not even a contest. Knew that. Everybody knew that back <laughs> every, then. Every this was like common knowledge. Ad, like, your animal husbandry was they part have of their lifestyle, <laughs> right? That's why Jesus was always talking about sheep and goats, sheep and goats, and wolves, man. right? Because back then, like he was a shepherd. This like everybody knew this back then. Yeah, everybody, everybody knew that the horse was <laughs> n- not to be. Trifled with. Trifled with in the emission <laughs> department. The king of emissions is as it has been seen from the horse. <laughs> as, as any child would know back then. Like, and not of seen as of from the donkey. And by the way, like this just comes up. <laughs> I was uh, we, we went driving around one day in the Sabbath and with the, the sole purpose of singing to animals. And then having the animals come over, because the animals, when you sing to animals, a lot of times they'll come over thinking that maybe you have food despite the bad singing. <laughs> yeah. um, we had one, this was hilarious, like we were That's singing. Why you gotta try it against wild animals. Like a panther. Oh, I like it. Oh, I like that. That's like a good idea. Like singing to a panther in the wild. Well, See birds, birds will away. sing along sometimes. You can get birds to sing yeah, along. Bird, well, birds, yeah, they mock the singing to... They don't mock my singing. <laughs> in fact, for a well, very they, long they period, mock it in their here's way. here's my witness on this. This is very important. I'm not a bird expert, so there's I can't a verse really that goes say to what you know the birds are trying to do. I would I I would They're, like to have the floor for the moment for a very important biblical scriptural my real wife life witness of a horse emission. <laughs> I set myself up or a donkey dong. <laughs> You witnessed a donkey dong? Why are you so nasty, man? Hey, man, it's in the Bible. I want to talk about birds and singing, dude. I'm talking and you're from just talking the Bible. Nasty I'm stuff. holding it. You need to be kind right now. I'm reading. I am saying words that are in the Bible. I'm allowed to say these words because the Bible says I'm it. getting to the dirty part. Oh. All right. I'm just taking the long way. I'll get back to it. I'm just curious as to what... All right, so I used to do these videos by myself, and the only thing that was listening, like I'd have no viewers, but the hawks would come by, and a couple lizards. Like, the lizards would, like, get close. I love... There's a lizard, like, right on... uh, Like, outside, that was... that, That altar that I do the videos on which is just a vice. It has a vice grip on one of the corners, by the way. Um, (laughs) A table grip. And um, so anyway, that was all open. And I was doing a video and laughing and having a great time because I'm stoned. And nobody's watching. There's not, like right now we have two. There is nobody (laughs) watching at all. But but then a hawk would come by. And I have a... Yeah, a couple of videos where this hawk would come by because um, I'm making the video and the hawk's what are you going. Laughing at? Ah, ah! <coughs> Just the absurdities of Babylon, like the mass delusion, delusion. So, in this same way, we wanted to go out and sing. So we were singing, and the the horse initially came over, like it's like listening, it's coming by. The horse came to give you its assurance. Oh come on, man! <laughs> so. It actually did, and it it like took two steps toward us, and we're like, "Yes, we're getting progress." And then the horse took this enormous poo, (laughs) and it's me, Christian, and Caleb. Like we're all, and mommy, and then like ah, we recorded all this one, by the way. And then the horse came. (laughs) The horse came closer, and then we're singing. It was like totally listening, and then we stopped singing, and it walked away, and it got like an enormous boner. And then Christian goes, Daddy, is that a boy doggy or a horse? Is that a boy horse? And I'm like, 
Ah, uh, yep, 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 yep. And like, yes, son, it you, is. You know what I mean? The horse is like, <laughs> he's, like you don't even want to talk about it. It's just so the embarrassing. Horse is like, I am here to offer my issuance. <laughs> you may show your pleasure. <laughs> Come forward, please, one at a time. <laughs> Stand in awe. Stand in awe, men. Like and you're, you're, I'm showing you mine. You show me yours. Now, now, why the? <laughs> now, why this Let's gets have to the Godfather? Let's a proper gentleman's com- pom- competition, shall we? Right. <laughs> and, and in the movie The Godfather, by the way, in the movie The Godfather, like who? Who are the twisted people that are watching? Are they here for the Bible or are they just the twistedness of the... The twistedness. Kelly Mullins? Kelly Mullins. Nagahira Turum? I can't read them all. I got a green light. We're driving. So, to be honest with you, there's this scene in The Godfather that I always thought was a donkey because I always turned away and I was embarrassed. Maybe there's a donkey sound. (laughs) Like maybe the... the, I don't know. yeah, and I knew they kind of had that in Tijuana or something, so I kind of just assumed it was a donkey. <laughs> in any case, it was not a donkey, and I just I only figured that out just this morning. Not a donkey. So if you guys go on YouTube, there's a scene called the Superman scene or the Havana scene uh, in the movie the The Godfather. It's a very I don't know how they got this in the ho- well. It's Hollywood. Hollywood is always pushing the boundaries. Yeah. And this scene, this scene would push the boundaries today in a lot of different ways. Maybe. Oh, feminists. Like, dude, they I don't know. they are creating a scene where this girl is getting raped. Uh, so that, let me describe the scene, okay? So you're in Havana, and in the movie... Paint the picture for us. It's uh, the... What's the family's name again? The, the Corleones. Corleones. The, the main characters. Right. They're they're trying to work on some gambling deal, right? So the senator there, the corrupt senator from Las Vegas, and like they're trying to do something in, um, you know, tr- they're trying to legalize gambling and porn and prostitution. It's it's Nevada. So this senator. Is prostitution legal in Nevada? I don't know. So this I don't senator, think it, is. it they're they're more focused on the gambling thing. Should Actually, be. remember like to- Tony. One of them, he had to testify before Congress that he wasn't in a uh, that he wasn't in a gang in order to get cleared to have a gambling license. So it was it, it was to help him get a gambling license mm-hmm. that his family could be part right, of that racket. They, they, they expand into Las Vegas with the casinos. Yeah, yeah, and he couldn't get a license because of he could he failed his background check. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Which I did recently too. Like I. I volunteered to be a soccer coach and I got turned down because I have DUIs and a resisting arrest. Non-violently, by the way. Non-violently. Yeah, I was just geeing out, basically. <laughs> um, so, anyway, um, this scene in The Godfather, it's poignant because... He, uh, what's his brother's name? It's a very... I think it's Freddy... I'm going to say his name's Freddy. Fredo. 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 And the they reason... they call him Freddy a lot. Yeah. Or no, I guess they call him some. I don't know. But and yeah, he, Fredo. That's Fredo, Fredo is in a town, like for a town, like, like people in the Northeast or whatever that are in. Fredo is the sign or the name of the ultimate betrayer of your family. And the reason this is even uh, relevant to today is recently there was some CNN guy I, I don't watch the news but I saw the controversy there was there was some Italians going to this guy and he he portrays himself as being Italian on CNN mm. and they go dude you're afraid of you're afraid of so this critic this dissident this guy like because he has some power this guy on CNN he's got the news and right sure um, well some other Italians go, no, you're a Fredo, you're a Fredo, you're a, you're a sellout, you're a b- deceiver. You've deceived our tribe, right? So he yes, went the on. tribe of Italy. Yeah, so he goes on TV, and because he has a platform, he has the ability to defend that, like, this was a big deal, like, they were getting ready to have a fight, and, and this guy was, uh, the CNN guy, he was getting, uh, like, 
uh, using a lot of curse words and stuff. So you can look this video up, right? So part of this Bible study is to do some research. Number one, go to the Godfather movie. I think it's two or three. I forget which one. Um, it's two. It's two. Yeah, it's definitely two. Okay. So what they're doing is they're going back to show you how he came up. Like they're going back in time to show some history and how um, Fredo betrayed the family. And they, the big reveal that how he betrayed the family is in the midst of this scene. If you didn't watch this scene, you wouldn't know how uh, it was that Michael learned that it yeah. was Fredo that That's betrayed true. the family because there was a whole bunch of different people and there, this was a real war like, within the mafia. And right. there's all this false intelligence and you don't know who to trust. And uh, um, so anyway, Fredo gave himself away because he was he went to this so-called Superman show one time before at least when he was hanging out with these other mobsters that were members of the rival family that actually was killing uh, the Corleones. But what's his name didn't care because he was always revent Fredo didn't care because he was always resentful of the power wielded by stronger men. He was always kind of the the soft brother that wasn't uh, yeah, he was a up strong. Brother. Yeah, yeah. And Michael would have always felt like it's his job to help protect him because he was weak, and he always gave him a job and things to do and that sort of thing. But uh, you know, this is Bible kind of stories. This is all like uh, yeah, like, like Shakespeare yeah. and betrayal and having to like Shakespeare. Of uh, not not you too, um, but it's also kind of like Cain and Abel, uh, yeah. Esau, and because Michael is the youngest brother, yeah, it's brothers fighting brothers, and, and, and uh, Fredo is the older brother. Fredo's older than Michael. Yeah, but Michael's the one that takes over the family business. So it's the Esau and Jacob thing, kind of. Yeah, fighting over a birthright. And, and that's what, like, think of it, that's exactly it. It's like, Michael, even though he was, uh, well, some of the other brothers were killed off, too. So, right. Well, yeah, kind of, you know. <laughs> and one was a stepbrother, like, uh, the lawyer brother. Um, yeah, he's, he's, no, he's not, yeah, he's a stepbrother. He's not, like, an actual Sonny. member of the family. Right, was, was Sonny the, no. I'm not real good on all this. I, yeah. I like, I can it's, see the faces. Yeah, I, not, I never really understood like everybody's relationship. Actually. Well, Robert Duvall, Robert Duvall was the lawyer. He's just the lawyer. He's not an actual member of the family. Uh, He's just the, the a long time like friend, family friend. Yeah. He's not a, he's not part of the family though. So long of the show, like ultimately Michael ends up because the the dad dies. How did he die? Heart attack. Yeah, he's just in a chair, in a wheelchair. Yeah, I think he, yeah. He was, yeah, he was like out in the garden with his granddaughter. Uh-huh. And she's like playing and he's... Yeah, he's yeah either, it was old age I think though, basically. Yeah, I think he's either, no, I think he's walking with her. I don't think he's in a wheelchair. I'm not really sure, but yeah, he, he dies out there with her. Uh-huh. Yeah, but yes. it's just, you know, sometime shortly after he's like been shot like seven times. So the, this this theme of a rival between brothers is also in uh, the Lion King, and that's yeah. like a, a parable for Esau and Jacob, and, and biblically it's Herod, Herod, the, a false authority sitting on the throne, and because a false authority is on the throne, the kingdom goes down. Like what should be vibrant, a garden, a beautiful garden, because it's not being tended properly by a righteous king, you have a false authority scar. And it's all going wrong. Just like in uh, Moana, um, because the heart hasn't been restored, you have the darkness yeah. is destroying everything. Uh, you the can't fish anymore. You can't fish. Everything that the coconuts aren't it's bearing polluted. fruit. It's all polluted. Yep. So getting back, so how does all of this Godfather stuff, how does that... Uh, what does that have to do with Israel and this graphic 
porn, porn, pornographic scene in the Bible? Like, what does that all have to do? Like, how, what does it have to do with our own individual walk? Paul? Oh, my is it? <laughs> Everything. Has what you want to assign to it. It's idolatry. Yeah, that's what, it's, it's idolatry. It's addiction. Yeah, how many times in those verses? Physical, physical, sensual addiction. And you can put that into materialism. Any category you want to. It's it's like for a male speaking to a female, it's Just the drinking the peak. water can be considered an addiction. It's like the peak of harlotry for a man, for his wife to be doting on other men. Like that's it. That makes it extra worth. Not only is it just for the physical se- sex, she loves it so much that she's doting all over these guys. And there's there's that level, like you know, in, in a in an early relationship where it's just you and you don't have kids, the 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 wife dotes or the 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 girlfriend dotes on you during the courtship. Only and, the, you mean you don't dote on her either? No, no. It's like. It's and like, do not dote. You, yeah, you dote. You and love your wife. don't dote. <laughs> I dote on Robin. She I just, do not dote. I where you, you, are, you love and you take care, like you you know that there's times that they need uh, nurturing. And it's I'm, that, I'm not a naturally nurturing kind of person. That's not in my normal... You should be. It's biblical. I agree. It's something we got to work on. <laughs> it's a muscle you have to flex. My point is, is that unique thing of doting which think of who a a grandmother dotes on now she dotes on grandchildren like our uh, anybody's grandchild not even not just their own they're like vampires they're they want to suck that life out of that kid and become oh you're making it so dark man no but that's what it that's that's what it is it's Transference of energy. Those old yeah, people are on their way out, thing. and these new people are on their way in. Yeah, but, but it's Yah's creation. But it's that's the most... what the horror. That's what the horror is all about. It's the horror is about you're about to die. You need to let go of your body. But we want to hold on to whatever this is, and we just think that if by some way, if we could transfer that ball of energy, that new young little ball of energy, and just take some of that. And make us, to make us live longer and make us younger. Well, yeah, that's a totally different that's, thing. That's what it's all, no, that's what the whoring is about. The whoring is about, is about being addicted to this, what we call right now is life. This entire way of life. Like you want to go on reading, watching the news or reading the news and, and just go on like trying to save money. That, 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 even at the very end, even though none of it, you know, none of it matters, but we're still doting on our Egyptian masters because we love it so much. Yeah, yeah, I like, agree. There for that, there, there's not a is. willingness to divorce Pharaoh, right? right. So, which is this physicality, which is this reality. The material world, the material. So that our idolatry with the material world. Is, is what the fear of the loss of the material is yeah. what's keeping us from having the spiritual transformation which will create a, a, a greater spiritual uh, perspective which will additionally create a, a better physical reality. So the, the spiritual health is the root cause that creates the symptom of the captivity. So if we look at the world and we we act out a world based upon uh, it's the materialism, psychological. yeah, I'm saying the same thing. The psychological that yes. I, that's deals Which, with idolatry. Psycho, it's, yeah, it's all in our minds. It's all in our minds, but that's the thing. We let our minds control us, and we that's where we got to restore the heart. Tefiti. Restore the heart of Tefiti. To go back to the heart. Yeah. Back and that, that's what's so great is that, and I think that like part of the speaking in tongues idea is that if I went to speak to a bunch of Hawaiian people, I've, I've, I've been so interested in, uh, 
I never really cared about Hawaiian people because I was a military guy. It's just this is a base where the Marines set up before they go kill Japanese, right? That was as a uh, in boot camp. That's Luke the Gook, right? Hey, listen up here, candidate. Don't you forget that the E tool can also be used as a tool, a weapon to kill you, Luke the Gook, right? Your E tool is your excavating tool, which is in the back of your your, your shovel. Your, yeah, it's a shovel, like that folds. <laughs> you military guys and your fancy terminology. Right, the so, excavating tool. So what, my, the you reason the reason why that or call it a spade, man. Well, I guess a spade. Ah, you're so racist. You'd have to... No, a spade is a, is a spear. <laughs> Call a spade a spade. A spade is a spear. Um, or a shovel. It, so my, my point is is that everything it's that has ever gone into our minds, like I'm, I'm agreeing with you, everything that has gone into our minds, it's all mental. It's all mental. Yeah. So where is it that in our lives that w- what we learned, okay. where did we go wrong that that has caught us, uh, brought us to a point that we are in such rebellion to the garden that our king and creator views us as this whore that's actually doing the very opposite of what he wants us to do. Yeah. You guys think you're holy and righteous, but that's you're the doing ultimate. the opposite of yeah. what I want you to do. It's the ultimate. You're doting on Uncle Sam. $15 trillion question. You're doting on Caesar. You fear, you don't fear me, Yah says. Yah, you don't fear me. You don't obey me. You don't serve me. You're doing all this to Uncle Sam and Rothschild and Pharaoh and Esau and uh, uh, all these, uh, what were the names? It was Jerusalem. Uh, Assyrians. Uh, And then it, it said Assyrians. And then it just kept saying Egyptians. So, and by the way, this is Old Testament stuff. So how does this apply to Jews, it's, right? Yeah, it started saying Assyrians, but then it went to just saying that she was a harlot in Egypt. So, or Babylonians. So the way the that Babylonians. this... The way that this applies to Christians, which was this applies to their two sisters, right? That's the... So that it, Israel and Jerusalem is, is the Jews. Chaldea. Chaldea. The Babylonians of Chaldea. Yeah. The land of their nativity. Yeah. I guess Babylon was in Egypt. Well, it's Egypt is an, 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 a t- another type of Babylon. Just like for a while, for different periods of time, Jerusalem turned into Babylon. Babylon is yeah, where man, where be, materialism rules. It's, Egypt is... Uh, Babylon is a, a mind infection. It's, it's the body. It's the, it's that, the ego. Yeah, it's a mental infection. It's the ego. Yeah, yeah, that's... Babylon. uh, Yeah. Egypt. Vanity. It's the ego. And the devil knows this. So in Babylon, when you turn the TV in, you see a a non-stop... The devil is the ego. Titillation of the seven deadly sins. It titillates lust. It it titillates uh, wrath. It titillates greed. It titillates all the seven deadly sins of materialism so that we are constantly in pursuit of satisfying some physical pleasure or some mental pleasure. Some our desires are constantly being pulled in a physical, uh, low vibration direction of our, our worldly lusts. Whereas Jesus says, I, man does not live on bread alone. Like, that's one of the temptations of the devil in the wilderness. Right? Feast of Tents coming bread up. Bread of man. Bread made... Uh, uh, I think it says bread made by man. Oh, right. But bread is also the word. And bread is also... Uh, the word is what? also water, which is the logos. Right? So... What's well, wisdom? It's wisdom. knowledge. It's knowledge. And that means true, knowing what you're supposed knowledge. to do. What what wisdom really means is it's that you know Red and you can wisdom. see uh, what has happened through history water. and what has happened through experience uh, the, of what Yah has teached as, uh, as the word of the grand plan in life. 
that when when there is righteousness, there is the garden, there's the kingdom, there is blessings. But when there's unrighteousness, then there's captivity and the curse and suffering. That's generally what the Bible teaches. It just teaches right. that if you do things my way, spiritually, be yeah. love one another, love me, and the way you love me is to love one another. To yeah. demonstrate my agape love to all of all of the other all image of bearers creation. on earth. All, uh, of, uh, all creatures. All creatures. Including cockroaches. <laughs> start loving cockroaches and you will start loving God. The end. Yep. Cockroaches are awesome, just not in, in the house. <laughs> See? Go do your thing somewhere else. Yeah. Same See, with snakes. We all... It's that, all a matter of ownership. See, um, that's the idolatry. You think we own this house. This is my house. It's not your house. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's let's get back on like so the whole conversation, the, the topic of the video to be on point for anybody still listening, or even in the future, is the that future. we think that we are moral and righteous and that we're we're doing everything right. But in God's eyes, because we're still serving Pharaoh, because we're doting like like if you're getting a new job, the first thing you do is like, well, how much do I get paid? How much, uh, how like how much work do I have to put in for reward that I'm gonna get? Do I have to move? Do I gotta work weekends? Is it nights? Is it like all this kind of stuff? And Yah's going, you like think of how much well, thought goes into that job. But but Yah goes like, well, how much thought do you put into what I care about? Right? What is it that Yah care? Like what would make yeah. Yah happy this coming October? And what would make Yah happy this coming October? is observing the Feast of Tents, right? And that's according how... According to you. Well, according to the Bible. No. Um, can I put my window down? Three times a year, the men of Israel are supposed to... The men oh, only! No yes. women! No women! This sounds kind of gay, dude. Yeah. Only the men will there, There's this. about... There's about four verses in the Bible... That's the men and the think, women are supposed I, to be separate. That's why I think there's supposed to be two Bibles. Like, we only have the men's Bible. The men's version. The women's version was burned and lost <laughs> for some strange And anyone reason. who had it. <laughs> but, but that takes me back to the, the story of Lilith. Maybe that's what Lilith really was, is the original Bible that had both stories. Because now we only have one. We're only the men. You are a heretic! Only the men. Um, so women are not allowed into our manly clubs unless they're whores, <clears throat> but that's a separate concubines. Concubines, they're not whores, they're concubines. So I, I think we will allow concubines, but no wives. So I, I think a better perspective that we have to really view the world and because I think it's in the, Bible. The, the best perspective that I've seen is David, where he's surrounded. Not only uh, does the government uh, view you as a dissident, right? and David was public enemy number one. You also have foreign enemies which are trying to kill your people. So, um, the whole trick is, who is your people? Who's your people? And what we're coming to find out is we are, number one, we're in captivity, therefore, uh, we are ruled by money lenders who are the head, right? We're the tail, they're the head, even though we outnumber them. And we could easily have a jubilee, and that's the good news, is we outnumber them, uh, we can have a David and Goliath, we can experience a real-world miracle, and we can sing happy songs about this transformation. That's what because, was supposed to be. Yeah, but these guys hijacked it. Did they? Yeah, they or hijacked it with free love. Up. I and, don't think um, enough people showed up. Like, there was a lot of people that went, but I don't think enough made it. Like, it should be a concert for everyone. Like, the tickets are free. You, everyone needs to show up to the concert. All right, let's do it. That's that's how you have free love. All right, well, so at Feast of Tents, the, the, our to. band called uh, The Two Witnesses, Two Witnesses will perform a song. At a least. song. There's our free concert. See? See, Paul's, he's what a song? doer. So come to Feast of Tents. All you need is one song. October the 19th. 
so, and let's we can do, all let's, sing it together. Here, let's we can do Evil Man. Okay, well, no, we're not. Oh, original. what was our, our original song idea yesterday? Remember that? Remember we, we had a... We, we were talking about Paul McCartney moment. You actually came up with it. It wasn't me. It was I your idea. It was a song idea. What well, was just a, a lyric. It was a verse from the Bible. Uh, you'll have to get back to me. My, my yeah. memory banks are a little dry right now. I just... I want to remember it. And, and it's like something we should have written down. That's why... Um, this is an important witness too. Recently, there was a dude. Yeah, when it comes to things that I say, I—that's where I am not. <laughs> we have three people watching. I do not remember things that that's, I say. That's why he, you know, that um, ever. So I want to want to give you guys a witness about cannabis and the power of cannabis and how it's gonna, how how cannabis. I wrote a book called "The Cannabis of Exodus: Prophecy Fulfilled." Uh, transferring hearts of stone, transforming hearts of stone into hearts of flesh. Hearts of stone. So if you guys know your Bible, in Ezekiel, there's a prophecy, and in Jeremiah, about, yeah, the, the New Testament is not about the changing of the law. It's no. actually the changing of the hearts. Because the, the because of our hearts of stone, we are, we are stiff-necked, and Israel was stiff-necked and she was unwilling to change her pouring ways she kept kept going on serving the federal reserve just paying her bills just uh enduring every day. the captivity building bricks making bricks for pharaoh st sitting in traffic for two hours a day right just come unwilling to divorce pharaoh just like 2000 uh, no sorry 3500 years ago so if you know the signs of the time part of the transformation where there was this righteous people who was who had the stones and the courage and that the fathers loved their sons so much that they didn't want their their children their boys their beloved children to be enslaved so they felt so much pain that they cried out to Yah says Yah we we messed up we we made we made oaths to the United States Constitution we believed that the U.S. Constitution was the supreme law of the land. We thought that we the people was the ultimate authority on earth and that we the people should make laws and, and that we the people should define good and evil. When that is a, uh, a tragic lie, a deception, a vanity. Because in, in the garden, there were three voters, right? Um, but there's only one side. So you have Adam, Eve, and the serpent, and they all voted that you would not die, and it didn't matter. So majorities don't rule. Yah is the ultimate commander, and he he wants his bride, his bride Israel, to remember, this is the way I want a bride. I don't want you to believe and uh, serve Rothschild as a, a debt slave. I don't want you to be enslaved. My yoke is light. I want you to live naturally. I want you to have a, a life where you're a li a la you can live and raise your children like the Amish or the American Indians uh, in a tribal fashion where the daddies just hang out and like Paul and I would be going fishing today with our sons instead of going to build a uh, an above ground pool for some stranger in Lakeland that we're never going to see again if we do our jobs. Um, so... Yeah, Never. So our next step with this is that we want to invite people in. And uh, we had this uh, prayer answered. There is a local guy that's in St. Pete that sent me a private message, a friend of me. I, and normally I don't friend people. That I don't know. Like they don't have... Uh, um, they're, not re they're not friends of some other person that I know. Because I kind of screen them. Friends of friends. Because of... Um, we talk about some very uh, radical stuff, and eventually these these people just drop yeah, off and they get offended. It's not that radical if it's the same stuff that's in the Bible. Well, Jubilee is about as radical as you can imagine. Jubilee because means if it's been it's been there for thirty five hundred years, so it's not new stuff that you're bringing up. Well, the truth is radical. There's there's a frame by Orwell. It says it's truth. Truth is hate in an empire. Emperor, empire of lies. Truth is yeah. hate. So it's very. 
So let me put it this way, Jubilee, what Jubilee means is that everything ever created is created by Yah, every song. So there's no such thing as royalties. So there's no such thing as Pharaoh. There's no such thing as ownership outside of Yah. So Yah, through this reset, he resets all of the land, every inch of land on earth, all of the corporations, all of the governments, all the Caesars, all the Pharaohs, all of them are put on notice as being wicked tenants. And all of it, all of the land gets repatriated and everything's a big reset, right? So there's going to be a lot of people... All of us die. There's going to be a lot of people who have stock in Amazon, right? We're going to die. Who have their whole life savings in Amazon stock, their retirement fund. Yeah. They are not going to be willing to give that up and they're going to want to kill us. They're going to kill themselves. And they're going to want to view us as financial terrorists. And because they view us as that, us just like Jesus and the apostles and the prophets from the yeah. Old Testament. You're going to die. If you go to cancel debt every seven years at the Feast of Ten, right? That's how you cancel debt, to kill people. You'll be viewed as a financial terrorist. You'll be a political dissident. So us in the same way as a David, will be viewed as a public enemy, just like Jesus, where Jerusalem itself became a Babylon, where the children were being murdered, trying to get to the true king, Jesus. So he, his family had to escape to Egypt. So everything was turned up by, upside and down for the Israelites, because what was formerly captivity, meaning Egypt, was now the place of refuge just like it was during the time of Joseph and the Israelite fathers, right? Yeah. For a period of Joseph time. Joseph and his Technicolor dream coat. Right. So his own home, his own home became a place of Joseph. terrorism where his own brothers sold him into slavery. All 12 of them. Uh, yeah, yeah. So all of these stories are rich and it's all woven. But, but my lesson is that like going forward, what do we do? What do we do? Number one, we're in captivity. How do we get out of the captivity? That's get on your knees aspect, and cry right? out to Yah and be blessed that he forgave our sins, that we can be made anew. He didn't forgive our sins. Jesus didn't forgive our sins. No, he didn't. He can, but you have to awaken Jesus in your heart. That's the changing of the hearts. Yeah, you got to... Your it has heart... has to be a natural awakening within yourself. Your heart has to transform to be humble and just go like, everything that I was doing was in the wrong way. Which I was going all... to change your psychological outlook on. Become humble. Everything. Prepare to be wrong over and over and over again. And it's basically to prepare your heart to be humble, just to be... Oh, I was wrong about that. Oh, I was wrong about Christmas and Easter. Oh, I was wrong well, about... Well, about that. You just need to be prepared to die. Yeah. You need to be prepared to die. You are going to die. The old you. Any of you, you in general, everything about you, you are going to die. And you need to prepare for that. Which means you need to let go and be ready at all times. That's why the only thing you need to do is love God with all of your heart. Because you are going to die, and it could be any second. Yeah. If your mind is yeah. not on loving God... Yeah! Hallelujah! Then you completely wasted your time. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that that's, same that, love... That's what nobody wants to, wants to accept. We don't want to accept the fact that, yes, we are going to die, all of us. Not maybe at the same time, but eventually you're going to die. Yeah. So you, what you need to do and what the Egyptians used to do and what the whole point of spirituality is, is preparing your soul for death and your mind for death. Because it is going to happen and you need to be 100% prepared. But it, it, it's, to live now, too. It's, yeah, it's not to live like... now, carpe diem it, kind it, of it's stuff. It's something that takes... It, you have to work on it, and we're not working on it. We're working on making money for this materialistic world we live in instead of preparing for our deaths. 
Yeah, yeah. So, like, that's a good point. Like, think of that um, when you're in rehab. One of the big things they tell you to do that's very powerful, and everybody should do it. Uh, uh, Jordan Peterson talks about it, and basically, that is you should write your own epitaph right now, every day. And and writing your epitaph, you're basically why why should anybody go to your funeral, or meaning why should anybody remember you? And you won't be remembered for how much money you had. You won't be remembered for uh, uh, like what a great athlete you were, or whatever. It it'll be. But for the, the physical stuff, it was that you were willing to be a, an intercessor when somebody needed help and they, they were suffer, they were scarce for help. You helped them when they were weakest. You're doing the very things that God does. When we are weakest, that's when God's strongest. So if we want to be image bearers for Yah, we want to do the things that he did with the money lenders. Um, we want to be those that... Uh, that are healing people when they're broken. We want to be the ones performing miracles just like the apostles were doing and the prophets. If we can do those. Like, I, I, I've seen spiritual miracles but not like physical miracles so far. And I'm anxious to see that. And that's why it's been a blessing recently. I got this uh, private Facebook message from a guy who in the last couple months he gave a witness where he's saying, um, he was saying basically he's visited by God and he's he's been he's God smacked basically and cannabis has been an integral part of that and he's in St. Pete and he's got uh, children which are uh, one in four or one in five the same ages as uh, as our sons yeah and the reason why that is important now now hear this out this is extremely important in uh, Revelation. The prophecy is for 144,000 male virgins, boy male virgins. virgins. Uh, we, you should read. Again. Will you read the verse, please? What, uh, um, it? I'll GPS here soon. It's sounding dirty. Um, sounding Catholic churchy. So then it becomes: Are these spiritual virgins? I thought Revelation was. Or are they uh, physical sure. virgins? So is when it? you're a spiritual virgin, that that means you can convert, like. Um, What's the chapter? The... Uh, it's Revelation. Oh, you're gonna have to. I don't know. Oh, uh, well, maybe I should Google it. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. I stuck you. I totally stuck you. Um, it, there's two uh, verses. There's two witnesses uh, uh, talking about the 144,000. It's a very famous. So number one, let's let's get into the number. 144 is 12 times 12. There's 12 tribes, there's 12 apostles. This number is uh, a holy number because it's part of the prophecy. Um, so out of each of the 12 tribes, there's 12,000 representatives. The representatives are described as males, but then it also comes down to, it says virgins, but does that mean that they're just really young? Or does that mean... Uh, virgins usually means virgins, too. That they could be 12 years old? They're sexually pure. They're sexually pure. Well, that means there's going to be no adults. That, that Their parents mean, won't get in. So this is important. Well, that sexually pure means you, uh, you don't spill your seed. Yeah, we actually, you know what we'll do with this? We'll get a whole Bible study on this because it's a really important thing. You don't spill your seed. And it applies to our sons. You're going to love this prophecy because uh -huh. it, it, it deals uh -huh. specifically uh -huh. with our own sons. Okay. And it deals with no, this. It deals with everybody. It's not just children. Well, if it's saying virgins. Yeah. You, That's my you, point. You, that you means it's. Virginized. By, by stop, stopping the spilling of seed or stopping. Yeah, they, they could be a 40... The orgasm. They could be a 40-year-old virgin. All right, I'll, if you want to look that up, I'll, I'll read. A virgin doesn't necessarily mean you've never had sex before. I mean, it, you could say it could be someone who's has never had an impure sexual thought. Okay. Or so it gets... It's, it's pretty complicated clean, stuff. Cleaned out their psyche enough to where they no longer have sexual thoughts. So of, my... So my point is, is like, uh -huh. 
that verse is that's the opposite of the way that Yah would describe the Israel of Ezekiel. Because in Ezekiel, she's the opposite of that. She is the most whoring, um, physically and spiritual that you can possibly imagine. Alternatively, the 144,000, that is complete uh, spiritual obedience, in, meaning you have to divorce Pharaoh. Uh, basically, getting to the idea of that, that revelation the book of Revelation is the repeat of Exodus because the book of Revelation has plagues, the a book of Revelation has famines, and it has two prophets in uh, the in the form of the two witnesses. So, um, it's a, a very important verse, uh, and and understanding to realize that we're in captivity now. We're not going into captivity and tribulation. We've been in tribulation and captivity and under the curse because we have been serving for thousands, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of years, a millennium, the money lenders. So there's a false authority on the sh the throne that needs to be a victim uh, worldwide and uh, in Jerusalem of a secular. The Jews in Israel and Jerusalem are secular. They have an Egyptian pyramid and an Egyptian obelisk uh, on their Supreme Court building in the, the, the Knesset, right? So that's why you have so much conflict in the world, just like in the Lion King, because you have Scar on the throne that should be, or Herod on the throne that should be occupied by the Lion of the tribe of Judah. So, how you doing? We're gonna Just says 144, 44,000 of the tribes of Israel. There's, there's two that will be marked on their foreheads. There's two verses, so maybe it's the other verse. Anyway, I got to get to this uh, mechanic to go pick up a tractor. Um, we got to pick up the tractor. So uh, thanks for listening, Henry. Multitude. Enrico Marino, Rockford Lundgren, Erica White, Mike Edwards, Mark Simmons. Richard Davis, uh, B.S. Zand, Marky Smith, Frank, Farouk El Torat, Steve Peterson, Paul Hollister, Sandra S.K., Kumar, Wayne Solomon. There's a lot of people. Thank you, Nagamo everybody. Nagamo Tarita, Kelly Mullins. Up church. For the dirt. Anthony Michels, Terry Baker. I got a GPS. Joseph O'Leary, Mike Vale. Should I end with the donkey show?